Good morning and welcome to an art history presentation for AVI 101. Today we're going to be looking at prehistoric art. Before we start looking at the art itself, we need to make sure that we understand the terms. We have uh, the first period, the Lower Paleolithic, which covers the period from approximately 2,500,000 years ago to 250,000 years ago. Next, we have the Middle Paleolithic, which covers the period from 250,000 years to 40,000 years ago. And finally, we have the Upper Paleolithic, which covers a range of dates from 40,000 years to approximately 9,000 years ago. We also have other terms. The Middle Paleolithic is often called the Mesolithic, um, meso being the middle, and the Upper Paleolithic is often called the Neolithic, meaning the New Stone Age. Let's begin our exploration in Bimbetka, India. This is in the Auditorium Cave. In 1990, on a um, chief's rock, uh, nine cupules were discovered. These are simple, round, hemispheric cavities with traces of red pigment. They looked ancient, but at the time, it seemed nearly impossible to figure out how old they actually were. A year later, an important discovery was made, a tenth cupule with a meandering line next to it, as you see above. These deposits were covered by other art from the Acheulean period and later periods. This allowed some accurate dating to be determined. These petroglyphs, called petroglyphs because they are carved into rocks, were made at least 290,000 years ago, which places them in the lower Paleolithic. Later research by other dating methods, um, specifically micro erosion analysis, gave an even more incredible result. It might be that some of these cupules were made 700,000 years ago. Petroglyphs of a similar age have been found in another cave in Madhya Pradesh. Outside Madhya Pradesh, though, there are no known petroglyphs of a comparable age. Moving from India to South Africa, you see the excavation of the Blombos Cave. In the Blombos Cave, we're looking at um, the Mesolithic period or Middle Paleolithic art. And what we see here is a piece of ochre with hash marks. And you see the actual piece of ochre and then a, an example here of what those hash marks look like and here's a close-up of the same. These were made between 100,000 and 70,000 years ago in a series of caves and it is here that officially human beings are credited with the beginnings of making art. Also from the Blombos Cave, we see Nasaria shell beads. These shells were specifically selected for their size and then perforated or had a hole drilled through them 75,000 years ago. Now these shells weren't found in the ocean just outside Blombos Cave, but instead they came from a river about 30 kilometers away from the cave. And these shells push evidence for human ornamentation back at least 30,000 years. Not only were the shells drilled, but they also retain traces of ochre. And you saw ochre in the preceding slide. 
These ochre traces tell the archaeologists that either the shells or the surface on which the shells rested were covered in ochre. Okay, uh, here we have the first ochre crayon drawing dating to about 73,000 years before the present. The lead archaeologist of the Blombus cave site by the name of Henschelwood said, quote, there is no doubt that the marks on the ochre meant something to the people who made it. It's a symbol that's been repeated over and over again, and it keeps on being repeated across the world, in Australia, France, Spain, and everywhere else. This is part of the repertoire of signs the human brain produces, end quote. We're off to Spain, and we're looking at La Pasagia, uh, dated to about 65,000 years before the present. These are scleriforms, or ladder-shaped symbols, on the walls of La Pasagia in northern Spain, and they have been dated to nearly 65,000 years ago, which means it must have been painted by a Neanderthal. Modern humans did not arrive in this area until thousands of years later. So there you go, the Neanderthals created. We're looking at a wall in a cave in Gibraltar, which is part of the United Kingdom, that dates to 39,000 years before the present. And I want you to note the similarity between these markings and the markings that we saw on the ochre at Blombos Cave from South Africa. 35,000 years ago in Australia, this beautiful carved face was created by the indigenous people of Australia. We're off to Altamira, Spain now. And this is a red bison in the cave walls. I want to talk about this period. It's the Aurignacian period, and it covers the time span between 39 and 35,000 years before the present. The people called the Aurignacians left and spread throughout the area covered by Jordan, western parts of Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Palestine, as well as all the way to western France. Here we see the Venus of Holofels, also known as the Venus of Schelkling, um, Schelklingen in Germany. Uh, this is an Upper Paleolithic or Neolithic Venus figurine made from mammoth ivory, so the tusks of the mammoth, and was unearthed in 2008 in Holofels, um, a ca cave near Schalkingling in Germany. It has been dated to between 40,000 and 35,000 years ago and belongs to the early Aurignacian period at the very beginnings of the Neolithic or Upper, Lithic, Upper Paleolithic period, um, which is also associated with the arrival of um, anatomically modern humans or Cro-Magnons in, in Europe. The figure is the oldest undisputed example of the depiction of a human being in terms of figura figurative art, only the lion-headed zoomorphic Leuvenmensch figurine is older. And the Venus figurine is uh, housed in the Museum of Blaubeuren. Not only were anatomically modern humans or Cro-Magnons uh, carving figures of human beings, they were also creating musical instruments from hollowed out bones. Thank you for taking the time to listen and watch this presentation.